The New Orleans Saints need to make some changes. If you're with me, whether it's coaching, players, personnel, ownership, I don't care. Hit the thumbs up icon and like this video. It's Overreaction Monday once again here at Saints Now by Chat Sports. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Trace Gerard. If this is the first time you're watching one of our regular videos, welcome in. Hope you enjoy the watch party. And without further ado, let's get into Overreaction Monday. So how this is going to work, I'm going to give you an overreaction that I've seen around social media, I've had in my own opinions, or wherever. And then I'm just going to give you my take on what I actually think about it. So first, Overreaction, Fire Dennis Allen. You watched our post game show yesterday. Uh, you would know I am all for this. It's for who that's for me, meaning I am 100% in support of this idea. It is just time to move on because, honest question, what does Dennis Allen do well? Like, truly, what is he good at as a head coach? You could argue maybe he's good at developing DBs. Absolutely, I would agree to a certain extent. But those same DBs missed, like, what, 20 something tackles, it felt like yesterday against Tampa Bay. 51 total points against the Saints defense. Most of those came with a lot of broken tackles on that the, the scoring plays. It was ridiculous. This is what Dennis Allen's defense has done this year. So again, I will pose the question to you. What does Dennis Allen's defense do well? They can't stop points. They are literally these league's worst. Statistically, they are the worst at stopping yards per game. They are the second worst at stopping yards per play. Sure, they're all right in the red zone. Their sack percentage is atrocious. They're terrible against the pass. They're god-awful against the run. So once again, what does Dennis Allen do well as a head coach? Nothing. He has a 34.2 career win rate. That's ridiculous. There's only a handful of coaches still in the league that have a worse winning percentage and one of them is Raheem Morris. And most of his losses were years and years ago. His team right now, what, 4-2? and two? Come on. Well, this is ridiculous. Good teams and good coaches. This is mainly a coaching issue. The good coaches in the National Football League, they work through in injuries. They don't use it as an excuse. They find ways to make adjustments in the game. They find ways to win, and they find ways to battle through adversity and come out on top. We have never seen Dennis Allen do that. Honestly, how many one-score games have we seen Dennis Allen win? How many times have we seen the Saints fight from behind, come back, and win under Dennis Allen? Literally the only time I can think is Jameis Winston's first start, Dennis Allen's first year in Atlanta. That is the only time I can truly think of right now. Dennis Allen is not a good head coach. Defensive coordinator, different story. Head coach, he's not it. I am tired of the defensive head coaching world right now. I, I, I'm over it. I, I'm so sorry. I'm over it. I don't want Robert Salah. I don't want Dennis Allen. I want an offensive-minded head coach. I'm tired of defense being the focus and then the defense being a liability. Give me an offensive-minded coach. Give me a coach that is going to cater to a young quarterback, that's going to cater to young talent, that's going to be able to make adjustments, that's innovative, that's smart, that has good play calling abilities, that can be a leader, that can command a football team. That's what this team needs. The New Orleans Saints, they do not need Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen might need the Saints, but we do not need Dennis Allen. And I am tired of him being my head coach. So I'm going to ask you this question. Ben Johnson looked real good. I think he looks real good in the Saints gear. Just saying. So who do you want to be the Saints head coach? Again, I'm out on Robert Salah. I don't want any of that. I don't want a defensive-minded coach. I don't want Belichick. I want a young, innovative head coach. So this is the pinned comment. I want you to share your thoughts and let me know what you think. All right, so the next overreaction, and this is one that I've seen all over social media. I've seen it in my YouTube comments. I've seen it in the live chat yesterday. Everyone after the game was saying, Spencer Rattler sucks. I could not disagree more. I could not disagree with you more. I may be only giving it one hoot at. I almost even gave this a fake news designation, but I'll give you one. Because there's no doubt about it, Spencer Rattler definitely could have been better yesterday. Like, no question. No questions asked. But when you take into consideration all of the factors, just tell me again, if you think that Spencer Rattler was atrocious, just tell me that you thought that Derek Carr is, the, is just the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
because that is not how things work. Yesterday against Tampa Bay, 22 of 40, 243 yards through the air, one touchdown, two interceptions, five sacks, and a 60.7 passer rating. I will say this around one of those interceptions. It was in garbage time. You got to try to make something happen. I can get it. The Buccaneers had a good game plan. They put him under a lot of pressure. They put him under a lot of stress. And that is what you should do to young rookie quarterbacks. And I'm going to give you more in-depth analysis. I'm going to give you more thoughts here in just a second. But I got to give a big-time shout-out to Game Time for uh, sponsoring today's video and making today's show possible. Game Time is my favorite ticketing app, and it's been in, uh, there to help me make so many memories, so many fun moments in my life, not just with my guy Jeremy Chuggs who's sitting to my right, but with my girlfriend, my friends, and my family as well. When you download the Game Time app, you create an account and use code CHATSPORTS, you'll get $20 off your first purchase, and you can use those savings to maybe get yourself some gear, maybe some concessions at the a Pelicans game. Hey, the blender's about to open up and the Pels are about to get going. So go see Zion and all of the New Orleans Pelicans rock those, uh, the skeleton, the New Orleans skeleton Pelicans uniforms. Those are absolutely fresh. You can save some money and you can use that to buy yourself a jersey when you use our code chat sports. You get $20 off your first purchase. So, you know, do what you want with those 20 bucks. Game Time also has a feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. So when you download the Game Time app and you go to redeem your code, just plug it in right there. Chat Sports. It's C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S. It's also right here for you. Terms do apply, but reminder, $20 off your first purchase. So download the Game Time app. Use code CHATSPORTS. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. So thank you. As a thank you for supporting the show and supporting Game Time, download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. It's also time to talk about the rookie debut. Again, I gave this one hoot at. And why? I told you about the stats. I told you that he needed to improve. But again, I firmly do believe that considering it was a rookie debut, considering that he has a terrible offensive line that's very injured, not even a terrible offensive line. It's just a very injured offensive line. Considering he didn't have Chris Olave, he got knocked out, what, in the first offensive drive due to a concussion, ruled out very quick. That hurts. And Spencer Rattler in the postgame press conference said that losing Chris Olave hurt a lot and that he was going to be a big part of the game plan. It, it sucked having Spencer Rattler not have a full support system around him. But that being said, there is no doubt he needs to be better. He needs to be a better decision maker, get rid of the ball quicker, read the field better. There is no doubt about it. But again, I'm just going to write this off as it's a first game jitters. It's a first game. I just want to see him continue to grow and develop. Caleb Williams, how good was his first game? A any of the rookie quarterbacks, how good was their first game? Outside of Jaden Daniels, who right now is an anomaly. But Next Gen Stats actually pointed out something pretty interesting. And I want to give a shout out to Ross Jackson because he actually pointed this out. And this is where I got this information. Uh, Spencer Rattler, he was 7 for 12 for 111 yards when he was throwing outside of the pocket. In weeks 1 through 5, the New Orleans Saints quarterbacks combined for a total of 58 yards. That's the most by any Saints quarterback since tracking began back in 2016. So I will say, in terms of was it bad? No, it wasn't. We saw him make a lot of plays out of structure and rolling out of the pocket and on the move. And I think that that's a good way to run this offense, especially considering we're going to have Spencer Rattler be the starting quarterback for the next three to four weeks. I think it is the better decision. I do not want to switch things up and throw Jake Hayner in. Keep Spencer Rattler on the field. He needs to continue to grow. He needs to continue to develop. And Jeremy and I were literally talking about this before we started filming. This is a building block year. Honestly, it's just a building block year at this point when it comes to the New Orleans Saints. Unfortunately, the first two weeks, we were sitting here saying, you know what? We're competitive. We actually might be playing for a Super Bowl in our own city. Now we're going to be fighting for not being last place in the NFC South. That's just kind of the reality of where we're at. Unfortunately, Derek Carr is hurt. You never root for injuries, but Spencer Rattler, this is a prime opportunity for him to learn, grow, develop, and get real reps in real games where if he does turn things around, Saints can still win and be competitive and push for the playoffs. Now, with Chris Olave being out due to a concussion and leaving yesterday's game, Bub means he really answered the call. In the live chat, we had people saying, who's going to step up? Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Juwan Johnson? Is it going to be Shahid? Is it going to be Mason Tipton? Bub means 
answered the call. And I need him to continue to answer the call. Averaging over nine, or nine yards a catch, the first touchdown of his career. He had his first catch of his career. It was his rookie debut. So it was actually pretty cool. This was the first time in Saints franchise history a quarterback – and his first touchdown went to a receiver's first touchdown. It's actually, you know, kind of a cool little thing right there. Huh? Uh, yeah, good question from Jeremy. Who keeps the game ball? I don't know. It feels like Bub has to keep it, right? feels like Bub means has to keep it. Spencer Rat will throw a few more, right? I don't know. Who knows? Long story short, Bub Means needs to continue to step up. So just we talked about Spencer Rattler's debut. I don't think that he sucked. I thought that he was solid. I thought he was good, not great. But he was solid enough in his rookie debut. But what do you think? Sound off, write the paragraph. I don't care how long you want to make your thoughts. Just share them down in the comments section. I'll be interacting with all of you, so let me know. All righty. Is it time to tank? I've never been in support of tanking. But here we are, uh, Monday, October 14th, and I am giving this two hoodats. Um, I am about 50% in on tanking right now. I am, n for the record, I have never, ever, ever wanted to tank. I have always thought that tanking is what loser teams do. Loser, poverty, just poorly run franchises, they tank. Because teams that tank stay at the bottom. What in the hell is the plan? Like, I, I honestly am sitting here thinking, I, I'm, I'm Mr. Coach Klein at the Bourbon Bowl, no Bobby Boucher, looking around at halftime. Does anyone have an idea? Anyone have anything? Anyone have an idea of how we can fix this? I don't. We're very hurt. We're run by a very bad head coach. Rookie quarterback right now. It's going to be hard to turn things around. Fortunately, if Eric McCoy, Taysom Hill, and some of these other weapons can come back, things can get a little bit better. But as of right now, the New Orleans Saints have pretty prime real estate in the draft. If the number eight overall pick, we can show you what the overall top ten looks like. And I'm going to be honest, you're not going to like it. I, I'm just going to say one thing here. Seeing that we, the New Orleans Saints, are technically considered a worse football team than the Las Vegas Raiders is absolutely embarrassing. It is a joke. It is a testament to how poor this team is run. It is a testament to how bad this team is playing right now. And it's just a nod to how much this thing needs to turn around. We are sitting here in weeks one and two, the number one defense, the number one offense. Now we have the worst team or the worst defense in point, or yards per game. Horrible running defense. We allowed eight yards per carry yesterday. That's unbelievable. That's ridiculous. You let Chris Godwin go for what? Over 120 something yards, two touchdowns? Are you kidding me? Like, I'm not in the boat of tanking because if Spencer Rattler can get you some wins here in the next couple of weeks and you can turn things around over the next three to four weeks then shoot, man. You can compete. You can still try to win. You can still try to win the South. But I'm also in the camp of, you know, maybe, maybe, just maybe, a change of scenery, a change of leadership, a good draft pick, maybe that's what this team needs. I, I'm honestly at the camp of, I don't know what to do. So I need you to be the head coach. I want you to tell me what you think is right. Would you compete? Or would you tank? Right now, what are you doing? If you guys want to hit me up on social media, I post on all platforms, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. It's the same handle on all three platforms, TraceGerard48. Except for Instagram, just throw an underscore on the back end of it. The links are going to be in the comment section description of this video. I post all the time. Uh, if you guys want to hit me up, I love chopping it up in the DMs as well. So slide in my DMs, hit your boy up. Y'all stay golden. We will see you next time.